Okay, so we're just about ready to go through and list each of the nakshatras and do a whole video on each on each one of the stars. But there is uh, one more thing I want to say about the qualities and um, go over this real quick. So the qualities of the nakshatras can be one of a few different kinds. They can be fixed and firm, or they can be soft and friendly, or they can be tikshna and sharp, or they can be hard and harsh. Um, and then they can be cruel and violent as well. And then there's even moving and unsteady nakshatras. So these are the these are the only ones that they can be. They can be one of those. And again, we're gonna spend more time on each star with it, but the soft and friendly ones would be the best naturally for friendly, soft socializing activities, right? And then the fixed and firm ones are generally the best just overall. So like Rohini is fixed and firm and um, the Uttara ones like Uttara Bhadrapada, Uttara Shada, a very Victoria star, those are fixed and firm. And those are, you know, just more reliable. So it's just generally considered good because those are things are going to grow in a more reliable way. And then um, the sharp or harsh ones, those are really, like I said, best for destruction or tough things you have to deal with. And then same with the cruel and violent ones. Um, those are more for fierce and ruthless activities. And then the moving and unsteady ones are, yeah, for just for when you're trying to move or make things different or you want something to be a little bit more unsteady and fluctuating. All right, so let's talk about the nakshatras themselves. Okay, so Ashwini is oftentimes given as the first nakshatra, but really I think that Kritika is the most appropriate first nakshatra. Um, but I'll just start with Ashwini because a lot of people are familiar with that. But just just know that that you know, um, Kritika is actually probably the true truest first nakshatra. Um, Ashwini is the basically the two horsemen. So in Vedic philosophy, there were just these. The Ashwini is the star of the Ashwins. Okay, so these were like these two twins. These uh, they're two like children of the sun and his wife. Um, the son's wife is a name which means consciousness. And so consciousness and the son birthed these two. So right off the bat, like Ashwini is telling, we're, we got so much information already because Ashwins are the horsemen and they're from the sun. So right off the bat, that's why I was saying they're like the Knights of the Zodiac, like they have a sun related quality, you know what I mean? They're heroes, they're heroic. It, people with Ashwini placements are just heroic. Um, <clears throat> and they have, uh, like, it's kind of funny, there's a myth where basically the sun turned into like a stud like horse uh, in order to seduce his wife who basically took the form of a horse because she couldn't bear to be around the sun. Like the sun was so burning and so hot that no one could be his wife. So you know what I mean? Like, so the sun's wife had to literally take uh, the form of a horse on the earth and subsist off of just dry hay and grass to try to train itself. She, try, she was trying to train herself to be able to handle the heat and the dryness of the sun. <laughs> so she became a horse and uh, was doing this. And of course, the funny thing is the sun was so, so focused on himself that he took a long time before he even noticed his wife was gone. You know what I mean? And he was so involved with his own projects and his own things that once he realized that his wife was gone, he searched and found her as a horse. And so he became a horse in order to seduce her and chased her um, and, you know, basically eventually, you know, he impregnated her and then that's how the Ashwins were born. So yeah, these Ashwins are born out of this like incredibly intelligent fire and heat and they were here to do things and they want to act and do. And this is also why, you know, any of the horse symbolizes, horses are omen, oh, sorry, horses are always an omen of power, like across the board in the occult world to have horsepower is how we, how much power a car has and whatnot. And um, the Native Americans say stealing horses is stealing power, you know? Horses is like a divine technology. Um, 
And these people also do like technology. They like to invade, invent, innovate, um, solve problems. And they're also considered healers. The, the Ashwins are considered like the physicians of the devas, like the divine physicians. So all kinds of people who are into healing, medicine, things like that will have a lot of stuff going on with Ashwini. Like a uh, person, an astrologer that I think is the best astrological healer has his Atmakarika in Ashwini. Um, so that's the thing. The Shakti of Ashwini, each nakshatra has a Shakti and it has the Shakti of to quickly reach something, to quickly reach a goal. You know what I mean? And so that's really what you want this star for. And they were the, in the, there's another myth where they win this race to the sun, you know what I mean? And, and so again, that shows like their competence, their prowess, their power, their talent, their skill. Um, we'll go into examples, but when you get, when you look at examples of Ashwini people, they have brilliant eyes and they always just have a sharpness to them, like a sharpness to their intellect that's just profound. You know what I mean? Um, uh, the guy who played Dr. Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch has a Shwini stuff. And he, you know, the whole point of that movie is he's like a brilliant genius uh, who can, who's memorized, you know, he's in the beginning of the movie, he's doing surgery and telling people what year each album and each song came out on that they're playing on the radio in the background and what year it came out and what album and all this stuff. He's just a freak, you know, a genius freak of intelligence. And that's what uh, Ashwini has a lot to do with. They're the horse headed beings. So horse means power head is your intelligence. So they're powerfully intelligent. That's really just a simple way to see the symbolism of the Ashwins is just incredible intelligence, divine sun-based power and intelligence. Other stars have a feeling, have love, have other things that they're working off of. This star is working off of intelligence and a type of solar heat, a solar intelligence. Uh, the the result of the shakti is the world becomes free from disease so they want to you know just basically solve problems for the world um and again that powerful consciousness of the horse head you know the being horse headed <laughs> is kind of like what ashwini is is about um and so with all that intelligence and and stuff going on and all that fire in their intellect they want to help. They want to restore. They want to improve things. The Ashwins are praised in the Vedas and in the Puranas for never having turned anyone down. They never turn anyone away. And this is really true. And so basically the idea is that um, the Ashwins are like there to help people who aren't being helped otherwise. Like the Ashwins are... Um, The Ashwins relate to being overlooked, actually. So people who have a lot of planets in Ashwini nakshatra, they could be very strong and have a lot of good things going on. If they don't have other yogas for it, they will be overlooked if they don't have other yogas for fame and stuff in their chart. Because basically the Ashwins were the ones who were denied their share of the hobbies or the, the offerings from the, the rituals and the sacrifices in the old days of the Vedas. The, the Ashwins were not actually included in the deities that are supposed to enjoy it. And they're kind of overlooked. And there's a lot of myths and stories about that. As a result, people who have these placements will be overlooked a lot um, in what they do and their skills and their talents. They'll be this powerful horse-headed, you know, intelligent person who's winning the race and doing so good and yet still get overlooked sometimes. So that's one quality of Ashwini that's really um, worth, worth discussing. It's really interesting. Um, and then now let's talk about it from the angle of the uh, Taittiriya Brahmana. So the Taittiriya Brahmana says the two harnessed horses of the Ashvins is the community from above and the army from below. So they have a lot to do with um, communities and, and building armies. So this is also another really interesting point. That's what the Taittiriya Brahmana says about it. Ashvinur, Ashvayujau, Grama, Parastach, Sena, Avastat. It's like basically saying um, the, the two harnessed horses, again, harnessed horses, like power that has been, you know, like controlled and used and harnessed. Um, they, they are the community and also the parasta is what they need. So it's like they need a community 
they relate to a community. They want to go, you see, they, that's the thing, they want to get recognized. They want to go into a place in a city and help it. Like, you know, here's our medicine, here's what we can do and show their skills and all. And like, they actually really like competition as well because they know how good they are. And so when they compete, they win and they create an army or they, you know what I mean? They thrive on this competition, they need a village, they need a community. They need people to see them and they need people to serve. And by doing that, they create an army or they create a following like in a modern day world, a lot of Ashwini celebrities are these big influences and create a big following. You know what I mean? Like an army of people behind them. Um, and another, you can also even see it as the Ashwini needs a community or a village because they need something to defend. Another way of interpreting this is they need a cause. The Ashwins need a cause. They need a, like a fight. They need something to fight for. You know what I mean? A community means like a group, a city. Like, why do you go to war? You go to war, defend your community. So they need something like that, a cause, a purpose, a community, a village. And then they can use their intelligence and like rally that and create soldiers or train, you know, train people out of that village, which is what an army is. Um, so another way you can interpret it is like the two horses of the two horsemen need a city for soldiers or they need a village for an army. Um, and again, like the word Ashvin means like endowed with horses. Ashva means horse. Ashvin means endowed with horses. Uh, and so it means endowed with power, endowed with energy, with strength. Um, an old name for the star was Ashva Yujao. That was the old name in the Taittiriya Brahmana, which means a saddled horse, like a ready to go horse, someone who's just ready to go, light and swift. Remember, that's the quality. Um, so if you need to start something on a day when it's gonna be light and swift, like today, the moon is in Ashwini, I woke up and I was just like, like, let's, let's do this, let's do this course, you know? And um, that's what you want. Then you wanna start something on Ashwini. Um, so it's a star of swiftness, solving problems very quickly, uh, surgery, horses, travel, twins, empowerment of across the board, training, fighting for causes, being very skilled and yet overlooked at that thing, um, using your intelligence to be to win, you know, in any situation, uh, skill, aptitude, medical skill, especially knights, knighthood, you know, any of that type of stuff. Can relate to Ashwini, soldiers, army related stuff, villages, community uh, things. And uh, Ashwini is related, Ashwini is kind of known to want like wealth and prestige and a little bit of fame and wants to show that off a little bit. That's kind of just a little bit of what it's related to. Um, it wants to show off its mental prowess. Um, and so it is a little bit extroverted in some ways. Um, and it's kind of like the same idea of like, taking your guns into town, the old Johnny Cash song, don't take your guns into town, you know, or like this idea of what are you bringing into town? What are you trying to get recognized for? You know what I mean? What are you trying to, what are you trying to do here? Like what's, what are you trying to do when you come into town, you know? And that's what the Ashwini will, will relate to this kind of idea. Are you trying to get recognized? And what are you trying to get recognized for? What kind of clothes are you wearing? Your style, your fashion. Um, they, and again, they like, uh, that's the thing is to become famous or wealthy or to get to that point of having harnessed power, you have to kind of show your skill and your prestige. And so they want to go to the stage. They want to go to the village, you know what I mean? And demonstrate, uh, they want to go to the tourney, the tournament, you know, and, and the, guy, the Lancer, the guy who won that contest would have the better Ashwini stuff going on. And um, they, they need like that village as well for people to congregate. They need contests, tournaments, that's what they love. They're just known to love and uh, need competition. Um, and they like to demonstrate their skill because they know that that will attract support for them, basically. And remember, it's a Datu star, so they need support. So, ah, so yeah, see, now we're coming around. I didn't even make that connection myself until just now, but they're a Datu star, so they want to support others and they need support. So they need to go into the community or the village and get an army to support them on their cause. Um, and they're, they're great usually when it comes to leadership things in that sense. Now, what's interesting is Ashwinis are uh, 
Ashwini Nakshatra can make you super handsome if you are a man and like or woman and it's more youthful. So it'll make you like if you're a woman, you'll look so much younger and more like doll like and stuff than your age. And uh, for a man, it'll be more like that sharp, young kind of look that you'll maintain. But you'll look very handsome or beautiful and um, and sharp. Uh, they tend to when it's really strong, they tend to look a lot younger for longer. And that's the thing is they made that old sage Chavana youthful and beautiful again in exchange for uh, a rise in their status and a bit of the share of the Havis. So there's a myth where they weren't getting their share of the offerings in the ritual sacrifices in the ancient Vedic times. And they did, uh, they made this old sage Chavana beautiful and youthful again so that he, they would be included in that. So they're, they're related to like rejuvenation beauty youth and um and it's also kind of funny because it's like it's almost like like they, they, they these uh, shuni people need to beautify themselves so that they get that rise in status you see so this myth is kind of connecting that idea of like beautifying themselves and having a rise in status or beautifying another person having a rise in status um the girl that from Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams, she rides a horse the entire story. She's got her Venus in um, in Ashwini, and you know uh, she is a young girl. Her name's Arya, which is the word for it's literally a Sanskrit word, which means noble. Where we get Arya, Aryan, Ari, Aryan, Aryan is the mispronunciation of it, but it means noble. We'll get to a god, Aryaman, who run who rules one of the nakshatras later. Um, Arya Stark is the character that plays that Maisie Williams has a lot of this Ashwini stuff in her chart. And she's like this perfect archetype of Ashwini in that show because she's just um, extremely youthful, but can kick everyone else's ass. And, you know, she like beats everyone else and is traveling the whole time on horseback and kind of uh, using her like basically trying to always, always get more respect from the community the village. And the, in the end, she does. She gets a lot she gets a tremendous amount of respect and without spoiling anything, but um, anyway, just you, if you watch that show, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, that's kind of just like, um, there are so many other examples I'm gonna give in a separate more technical video where I actually look at the charts. But this is more, again, just going over the qualities of Ashwini. So they're the cavaliers, the knights, you know, um, they're two people. When you have two people that are yoked to power and armed and trained and positioned in a powerful, fortified place, that is Ashwini, you know. Um, and they want to go somewhere that has like resources and power and, you know, a place like a city and that that's what they need. They need those assets. And well, it's like if you're an army traveling, you would need to find the next village or city to replenish your yourself and all that. And also, though, because you like to be seen like a beautiful horse, you know, like a beautiful horse is like something that really knows it's adorable and wants to be adored. It likes being patted and stroked on the stuff, but it's also powerful. You know what I mean? It has kind of a there's a masculine quality to that. Um, it's very active, like reaching out going into things to reach things quickly um okay so then there's a uh, what else oh yeah the ashvinis are um they're called the ashvini kumaras kumara is like a word that i mean it means the youths you know um but it there's always this quality of youth that they're always in, entwined with you know so when you need someone when you want to do like any Anything related to youthfulness, Ashwini will be your star that you want to choose. Tesla. Tesla was a guy who looked way, like he looked really young. You know, he had like this sharp, stunning image. Maybe I could try to pull up an image of Tesla here for the video if I forget. You go Google it. But basically, uh, Tesla was a stunning man, very dazzling, traveled across the world to a new land. He went to a new community in America. You know, um, he joined Edison's army or Ed Thomas Edison's community uh, at first. And Thomas Edison, you know, um, overlooked him. Again, he was overlooked like Ashwini people are. He was way more brilliant than Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison put him to work digging ditches. You know what I mean? And uh, that says it all right there for the Ashwins. He was neglected his share of the hobbies, you see. Um, that's the same kind of quality 
um, he failed to get a lot of support during his life and he had Rahu in Ashwini. So he had it afflicted. So it was really tough for him. He also had an ashamed Mars, um, which we can talk about or, you know, go learn what that's about, but that makes it even tougher. Um, The other interesting thing, oh um, yeah, Maisie Williams, the Arya Stark character, she paired up with this other guy, the Hound. And so there's like half the series where she is paired up with another horseman. You know what I mean? Like wandering, that's what I meant to say. I left that in a note. And yeah, she's very youthful looking, very swift fighter. He gets armed with the weapon early on. Oh, this is the one that's really cool. So uh, Ashwini has to do a sight and vision as well and Maisie Williams or Arya Stark the character goes blind during the show and gets her sight her sight restored through a crazy medicinal process and through this whole spiritual cult she is in but basically that was like whoa that's a very Ashwini like red flag you know what I mean because it's about using medical therapy to rejuvenate Ashwini definitely has to do with rejuvenation um of course it has its limits and all but yeah, that's a good example of uh, Shwini. And we'll look at some more chart examples at another time. All right, thanks, you guys.